around the inequality. So whereas we had our less than, if you divide by a negative, you must flip that inequality around. Got to be that way. Make a little note here. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you must flip your inequality. or divide by a negative, you must flip that inequality around. For example, this would go to this. That's what we mean by flip it around. You change your inequality. Hey, by the way, did you graph this? Yeah. yeah. What number are we going to put on our number line? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty obvious. That's the only number that we have up there. Are we going to be graphing the numbers to the left or to the right? To the right. I've kind of given this away a little bit because I, I didn't leave any space over here. But if you look at our inequality, this says arrows going to the right. It's talking about the numbers that are bigger than negative 2. Where do numbers fall that are bigger than a certain number? Well, that's to the right of them. So we're going to graph this way. We're talking about all these numbers. If we do the interval notation, which you're also going to have to do for this, come on the right side, hand side of the room, where's my interval going to start if I, I'm going this way, where's it start? Does it start at negative infinity? Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone on my left hand side of the room, where's it? Good. Am I going to use a bracket or parentheses on negative two? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm using a bracket or parenthesis on infinity. Right. And we actually always use that for, for infinity. Where's your hand feel okay with this so far? Try a couple on your own. I want you to get all the way down to doing the That's good practice for you. We are going to be doing a lot of that in this class. Start on that one, I'll give you another one to do in just a second. Hey, by the way, when's your next test? Do you know? It's not this coming Monday, is it? No. no. You sure? It's It's over 10. What's the date today? I still have two weeks. Look at you. Does that make y'all nervous? Okay, so solve these down. Don't change the inequality unless you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, and then absolutely you do. Write this as interval notation at the very end, maybe graph it so you can see a picture of that, and that's what we're looking for. So our first example up here, everybody, what's the first thing we're going to do on this problem, please? Good, so we're going to do that. That wasn't everybody, but whatever. And we get less than four. Did you make it that far? Next step is, of course, we have to solve for x. We treat this kind of like an equation. The only difference is if we divide by a negative, we flip it around. That's it. So we divide by 2 on both sides. We get x, we get 2, and we have to flip that thing around, right? Yeah. Why not? Okay, so it's not just dividing, right? It's dividing by a certain type of number, a negative. 
So we leave this thing alone because we did not divide by a negative. If you want to graph this, it's already in the correct order. The x is on the correct side for you to graph this easily. x must be on the left-hand side. We put our 2 down. This is going to the left because it says less than or left than going this way. If we did interval notation, this one starts at negative infinity. It ends at 2. We're going to use parentheses. That's as far as we can go in that problem. Did you get that far? Yeah. Good. Next one, of course, we can do something very similar. We add 1 to it. Negative 3x less than or equal to 3. We're going to divide by negative 3. And we get x on the left-hand side. We get negative 1 on the right-hand side. However, you divide by a negative. And whenever you divide by a negative, what's that, what that's doing is reversing your inequality. You're changing the negative from one side to the other. That has to move things around. So we're saying positives are becoming negatives, negatives are becoming positives. What that does is flip our inequality around. So instead of having less than or equal to, I must have greater than or equal to. How many people made it that far? Good. So basic equation, however, if you're divided by a negative, we're flipping our inequality. Are you with me on this? Now we can go ahead and graph the same, same way. We have negative 1. Our arrow, since our x on the left-hand side is pointing to the right, we're talking about numbers that are bigger than a certain number. Bigger than means to the right. So we're going this way. We'll do our interval notation. We have negative 1 to infinity. Brackets or parentheses here? Both. Why both? Why both? Where's the bracket go? Am I going to put a bracket here? No. You don't know what infinity is. So if you don't know what infinity is, you can't put a bracket around it. We put a parentheses right there. So on the infinity to the bracket. A, a parent, uh, I mean a, a parenthesis. What did I say? The infinity or the parentheses first? The parentheses always goes around an infinity, or infinity always oh. requires a parentheses. Oh. Yeah. Either way you want to think about that. Brackets are, are for our integers when they include an equal sign on that. Cool. We feel right with this so far. Good deal. Good deal. It's something else on my mind, but I lost it. Probably wasn't that important, right? Just a key test question or something, you know. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to me. Let's see how now we can go ahead and combine this with our and portion of this section. So let's suppose, instead of just giving one inequality at a time, you're now given two. You're giving one inequality and another one that's happening at the same time. Let's see if we can do this in combination. And you're going to see why I had you graph this stuff. It's going to be pretty apparent. You know what? Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can do it with that one. Before we do this problem, let's go back and look at this problem real quick, okay? I want you to, to notice that we, we were able to do this one all right, true? We were able to do this one all right. Did you understand how to do these problems? Now, let's say that I change this problem a little bit. I say, instead of doing this, I make it and in the middle. So instead of having them individually, I say, now you have this inequality and at the same time this inequality. Let's look to see how this changes our problem. We made it all the way down. What I'd like to do now is instead of drawing two different number lines, let's put these things on the same number line and see if they have any intersection. That's what we're looking for, right? And means intersection. Let's see. Let's put down the 2. Let's put down the negative 1. Why am I putting the negative 1 to the left of 2 on this? It's less than 2. So we have to know how a number line works, right? Yeah. Number line works with numbers go in order. So negative one has to go to the left. Let's graph this again. Uh, some guys in the in the middle here. From two, which way do I graph? Right or left? Okay. Yeah, that's what we had in our original problem that I just erased, right? So we go this way. From negative one, am I going to go left or right? Right. Do you see any crossover? <laughs> Let's just write out our crossover, and we can we can finish off our inequality. Where does our interval start? 
Where's our interval n? Oh, here's a tricky question. Am I going to use a bracket or parentheses for my negative 1? Oh, yeah, bracket. Look at your negative 1. Am I going to use a bracket or parentheses? Bracket. How about for the 2? Why? Oh, no Yeah. And you know what? I can show you this as well. We're going to be doing this in just a bit. If you look at this, if you rearrange these like I did the 3 and the 5, notice how this could be written as negative 1 is less than or equal to x. I'm switching both of those around. I also have x is less than 2. That's from over here. That's negative 1 less than or equal to x less than 2. That is this picture. Do you guys see it? Same thing. Same thing. So you could write that as well. Now let's go talk about this one. What do you do with the and equalities? Let's solve both of these things at the same time. If we divide by 4 on this case, we get x is greater than or equal to 0. I don't flip anything around. I did not divide by negative. On the next one, of course, we're going to subtract 4. I'm going kind of quickly here because we should know how to solve basic, basic equations. We have 2x is, do I need to flip that sign around? I'm subtracting 4. I'm not dividing by negative. Negative 2. So even though that changed to a negative, I didn't divide by a negative. And we'll divide by 2 x's. Do I need to change that sign around now? No, I'm, I'm dividing a negative by a number. It's still negative, but I'm not dividing by a negative. Let's try and graph these. <laughs> I think it's out. You just cried. Did I miss it the first time? You've been missing a lot. Really? Yeah. That's unlike me. I'm going to keep my Wheaties. <laughs> if we graph both these on the same number line, because it says and, and says you've got to do it with the same number line, look for crossover. Where does this thing start? Okay, well, we have a negative 1. We've got a 0. They don't have to be in any sort of scale or anything. Let's graph the 0 first. Let's graph the 0 first. Can you look at the 0? Which way am I going to go, up and right or up and left? Right, because it's x is on the left hand side, it's pointing to the right. That's that way. Okay. Let's go to the negative one. X is greater than negative one. I'm, I'm here. Am I going to go up and right or up and left? Right. Up and up and right. Oh, that's weird. Look, it's pointing to the right again. That's correct. We are going to go to the right. Are you okay with this? Raise your hand if you understand where this graph is coming from. Good. Now. Let's look for any crossover, because and means crossover at the same time. Where is it meshing together? Like this was. Here we had no crossover, here we had no crossover, here was a crossover. Do I have a crossover here? No. There's nothing over here. Do I have a crossover here? No. No, there's only one of them. Do I have a crossover here? Yes. Yeah, in fact, this whole thing from here all the way till time ends you have some crossover. Let's see how to write this in interval notation. Can you tell me where the crossover, the and, actually starts? Does it start at negative 1 or does it start at 0? Zero? Zero. 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 Okay. And where does it end? Actually, it doesn't end, but we put infinity to signify that. Parentheses always goes around your infinities no matter what. Now, am I going to use a bracket or a parentheses around the 0? Bracket. For sure. That's how you write your interval notation. So yeah, it's a little strange, right? We didn't have this situation because we had two inequalities going the same way. We're just looking where they're, they're both valid. So pretty much this one's valid from negative one. This one's only valid from zero. So our crossover can only start at zero.